Hello, I'm back with a topic uh, known as dependent motion. Um, and dependent motion is uh, when, you know, position of one object depends on position of other objects. So, for example, here in this pulley system, if you move A, obviously position of B and C are going to be altered. So this is called dependent motion. And usually the, the objective with dependent motion is um, when you, you're involving a pulley system is to figure out the relation between velocities or acceleration of different blocks. This is uh, just a kinematic relation, kinematic equation, and has nothing to do with the weight of these objects. If the weights are involved, the masses are involved, and you have to draw a free body diagram, then you're talking about kinetics. Remember, the difference between kinetics and kinematics is that with kinetics, you're de dealing with forces, and with kinematics, um, we're just looking at the relation between velocities, acceleration, and positions. Uh, so first I'm going to talk about the relation between the velocities here and show you how that's done, and then I'm going to give you an examples with numbers. So this is really a simple problem, and you'll see hopefully by the end of the video how simple this is. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to actually uh, look at different segments of this uh, rope, I'm going to show it with green. So this rope made of different segments, and I'm going to number them and refer to them. Uh, so I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call this two, I'm going to call this three, four, and five. Now, uh, we are missing actually the rope that is going around this pulley here. Let me actually use a different color. So I'm going to use red here. Uh, red here, so part of the rope going around half of the circumference of these pulleys. Uh, and the pulleys don't have to be uh, of the same size, but let's say for the sake of our problem, as you can see in the picture, they're pretty much the same size. Okay, so I'm going to say if the total length of the rope is L, okay, the length of the rope is actually a combination of these four green pieces that I showed as one through four, and I forgot the five actually, plus if these pulleys of the same size, right, that's going to be four half of, uh, half pulley, you know, in terms of the circumference. So it would be two times the circumference of uh, one pulley. And you'll see actually these values are constant. I mean, they're two times the circumference. All right. So now the next step I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually now define um, the position vectors. Uh, Position vectors are actually uh, when these objects are moving up and down uh, from a non-moving, you know, reference, which would be probably this ceiling here. We can define then these position vectors. So, for example, I'm going to call this S sub A, position vector of A. I'm going to call this S sub B. And I'm going to call this S sub C. So as A, B, C moving, uh, the values of S sub B, S, S sub A, B, and C are changing. Okay, now the next step is actually try to describe the total length of the rope based on these position vectors. But one step, uh, one other thing I have to mention here is actually these constants here. So you see this piece here, I'm going to call that constant C1. So you see, those don't change. That's not going to extend. Constant C2, I'm going to call this constant C3. And then finally, I'm going to call this constant C4. And remember, if that's C1, let's say, is one and a half feet, is one and a half feet. It's not going to extend. It's not, it's not going to stretch. Okay. Uh, so now, back here, the total length of the rope. Look at L1. L1 right here, right? What is that? Isn't that actually S sub A? minus C1, and then you will do exactly the same thing for the rest of them. So that would be a sub A minus C1. Look at uh, segment 2, L2. Isn't that actually S sub B minus C1 minus C2, and so on? What would be th uh, S3? Uh, what would be this one? Length 3, sorry. Uh, that would be S sub B minus C2, minus C3, and then so on. Uh, segment 4 would be S sub C, 
minus C3 minus C4 and then finally L5 segment 5 would be S sub C minus C4 and don't forget that we have the 2 times the circumference so now let's go and clean this up so L would be what? we have 1 SA looks like we have 2 SB right? we have 2 SC right? and then bunch of constant looks like we have 2 C1 2 C2 2 C3 2C4 and then finally plus 2 times the circumference of the, uh, the pulley. Now remember the circumference of the pulley, let's say if the radius of the pulley is 1 foot, the circumference would be 2 pi, 2 pi times 1 foot, that's 6.28. So that's a constant. These C1, C2, C3, C4 are all constants. So this actually you add them up or subtract them, right? will get you another constant C5. The length of the rope is also another constant. Remember, regardless of what the position of these blocks are, A, B, and C, the length of the rope, if you have 25 feet of rope, the 25 feet is a constant. So when you combine L and C5, you get another constant. Let's go to the next page. So you end up getting this. You end up getting S sub A, right? Uh, Let's go here. S sub A plus 2S sub B plus 2S sub C equal a constant. And now the next step is to take the derivative of time derivative of this expression or this equation. And then when you take the time derivative of this, guess what happens? You take the derivative of S sub A, 2 times derivative of S sub B, and then 2 times derivative of S sub C equal derivative of a constant. Now of course derivative of a constant is zero and this becomes velocity of A plus two velocity of B plus two velocity of C equals zero and that's exactly the equation I wanted to get this kinematic relation. Remember you could take the derivative of this and get exactly the same expression for acceleration. Acceleration of A plus 2 acceleration of B plus 2 acceleration of C equals 0 is exactly the same relation. Uh, now, uh, so <clears throat> for something as trivial as this problem, actually, you don't have to go through this nonsense, actually. You basically say, okay, look, there is one rope associated with block A, so that would be one velocity of A. Two, rope, two segments of the rope associated with B, so that would be 2 VB and then two segments associated with C, 2 VC. That's how you come up with the relation. Of course, this is not going to work uh, for complicated situation, which I will show you in another video. I mean, I'm, I'm not, by, by the way, complicated doesn't mean it's really complicated. It's a little bit different. There are more than one rope involved. Okay, let's look at one example to wrap this up. Let's say if you're given that velocity of A is four feet per second down, and velocity of C is 10 feet per second up. So you're given velocity of A to be 4 feet per second down. So let's take that negative, I mean, uh, upward as positive and downward negative. And velocity of C is 10 feet per second up, right? So this is down and that's up. You want to find, let's say, velocity of B. You have the equation right in front of you. Just plug into the equation. So negative means, uh, downward means negative, so that's negative 4 plus 2 times velocity of B plus 2 times 10 equals 0. And then if you solve for velocity of B, you have 2 velocity of B equals minus 16, which means velocity of B is minus 8, which means then B has no choice but to move at 8 feet per second down. See how easy it is to come up with uh, velocity of B? Remember, regardless of the weight of these objects, this relation always is valid. 
VA plus 2, VB plus 2, VC must be equal to zero. Of course, if the weight of these objects are different, velocity of A, B, and C is going to be different, but the relation is always valid. Thank you for, for listening, and have a good day.